There is something called steadiness. There is something called consistency inside of you. Stability is what we need. That will bring momentum in your church. That will, bring, that will sustain what God will start in you today. Amen. Praise God. Why don't we ask all the people from outside to please come in? Yeah, and we're going to wait for them. Please keep on standing up first. And please shake off a little bit and just give me a little dance. There you go. Amen. Amen. Why don't you give a high five to, your, to the person next to you or a fist bump and tell your neighbor something good is going to happen to us this afternoon. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yan. Yan. I believe that momentum is here in this place. Everybody say amen. amen. One more time, everybody say the word momentum. Amen. One more time. I want to hear your voices. Everybody say momentum. Amen. 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 Praise God. You may be seated. I, I want to ask you a very important question. But before that, I want to talk about a word that is not just a momentum builder, but a momentum sustainer. Okay, so the word that I'm going to talk about this afternoon is when the momentum is built, how are you going to sustain it? Are you there? So the word for this afternoon is momentum sustainer. And let me just ask you something. This is the greatest question that God has placed in my heart, okay? The greatest question in the Philippines, they, they have something called the magic, magic sarap. And I also have a magic, magic question. You want to know the magic question? Because this magic question is what every company is asking to their new employees. This magic question is the question of a lady being courted by a guy, and the question is so simple. Are you ready for the question? Because this question will bring uh, sustenance. It will sustain momentum in your, in your church. Amen. Are you ready for the question? I'm still waiting for the people outside. That's why I'm, I'm taking long. So this question will help your church to grow. Are you excited with it? Yes. All right. Did you know that this question will change your family? So the question is so simple, okay? God has placed this message in my heart, and I call it the message, the greatest message of all time. And the question is simple. Why don't you face your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you stable? Come on. One more time, one more time. Look at your neighbor into the eye. Pastor Elmer, look at, look at me. Are you stable? You know, in Tagalog, they say, stable ka ba? A single woman would always ask her suitor, are you stable? That is the greatest question of a single lady that is being courted. Do you have 12? Do you have 144? Do you have a job? Why are you courting me? You don't even have a job. Are you stable? Come on. You know, when God placed this in my heart, I said, Lord, this is a momentum sustainer. God has already, God has planned to build a momentum right here in this, in this conference, in this training. But we need to sustain it. And the way that it will be sustained, listen to this, is when you are stable. Stability is needed to every Christian. Everybody say amen to that. For a pastor, I am looking for stable disciples. Disciples that will stand on their feet. Amen. With or without COVID, they will still win souls and they will make disciples. So, if I'm going to ask you, okay, if you are a cell leader or a pastor, what kind of disciples do you want? 
Now, back in New York, I, I mentioned about, I gave a message, uh, an introduction about this message. Because I felt it in my heart that when God gives you momentum, people must be stable. Amen? They must not be double-minded people and unstable in all of their ways. There's something called the FTT. Have you ever heard of the FTT? Failure to thrive. They always, they, they ask, you know, I have a, a, a young, I have a son, and when he was young, they would measure him, right? How, how, how is his length, the, the, the circumference of his head, because they have to check if he is thriving. He is growing. They call it FTT, right? If that person, if, if my child is not growing, if my child is not, you know, building up more cells in his body, then he has FTT. Did you know that immature Christians and immature disciples, they have a spiritual FTT, failure to thrive, and that is what we call instability. And that is the worst thing that can happen in your church. Come on. And that is the worst thing that can happen to a pastor. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a pastor who is unstable in all, his, all of his ways? Sometimes he is G12. Sometimes he's G6. Add more 6 and 6, he is G66. Come on. Amen. Have you ever heard of a pastor that he's double-minded? In what he's doing. Sometimes he's doing the vision. He's, and most of the time he's doing his own ambition. You know why? Unstable. Come on. Oh, sorry. Because, you know, Pastor, I cannot come to Virginia because of this blah, 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 blah. Unstable. Why don't you clap your hands for the people beside you? Because that person is a stable person. Amen. There is something called steadiness. There is something called consistency inside of you. Stability is what we need. That will bring momentum in your church. That will, bring, that will sustain what God will start in you today. Now, when the pandemic hit um, the Philippines in March, of eight, March last year, 2020, uh, 2020 you know, Suddenly, everything was frozen, and people cannot move. The momentum was suppressed, and we can't do anything. We only do digital. You know, in the Philippines, we had a, a time, a long time, that we were locked down. Unlike here in the States, right? People here doesn't like lockdowns. But Filipinos, we really, uh, you know, we, we really do what the government tells us. If it's ECQ, Enhanced Community Quarantine, we will do it. We, you know, we got really confused. There's something called ECQ, MGCQ, GCQ, barbecue, you know. The barbecue is the best. <laughs> but what happened is, because of the lockdowns, we lost the momentum. But I prayed to God. I prayed to God, Bishop. And I said, Lord... Even in this time of pandemic, would you please make my disciples stable? Because I don't want what was done already or the good thing that has happened, they will be devalidated. They will be, we will lose people. I ask God, God, if I'm going to lose people, is it possible not that many? <laughs> Have you ever asked that prayer in your life? Amen? And the Lord told me, make sure that your disciples, your remnants, the people who are with you now, will become stable. Amen? Now, what will happen if you are not stable? Okay? What will happen? Why don't we go in Genesis 49, verses 3 to 4. Let's check this verse. This is a very powerful verse. Just look at this verse. It says here, this is Jacob speaking and prophesying and talking about his son, Reuben. Have you ever heard of this? You know, some of you, you may, you may not uh, know this verse, but it says here, Reuben, you are my firstborn. This speaks of primary 12 leaders, you know, 
pastors who are already in the vision, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength. Read it with me. One, two, three. Reuben, you are my, my, and the beginning of my, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. You know, when you, when you read verse when you read verse 3, you're, you know, you're so astonishing. You are the excellency of my power. You, you know, uh, Reuben, you are the excellency of my dignity. You are my firstborn. So good. Right? The problem is there is verse 4. Come on. What is verse 4? <laughs> verse 4 says, unstable as water. You shall not excel. Oh my Lord. In Tagalog, maganda na, pumangit pa. Come on. It's already good, now it's worst. How did it happen? Because of instability. God wants to make a momentum in your life, in your church. He wants to build up something. But when people are unstable, come on everybody, say instability. instability. Because I am believing that this is one of the greatest messages of all times. Stability. Because of instability, the Bible says that Reuben, you are my firstborn. You know what it means? You're a primary child. Anybody here, you're a leader in your church. Raise your hands. Come on, yes. You are a firstborn. You're supposed to have double portion of the anointing. Come on. You're supposed to complete your 12. You're supposed to build your one for four, and suddenly you become verse four. Ouch. Come on. Unstable as water. You know what water means? You cannot walk on water because it's unstable. Anybody here, you had disciples or maybe you had people in your church who are very unstable because they operate not in the spirit, but they operate with emotions. Water is just like, you know, walking on water is like this. Sometimes the water is high tide and sometimes it's low tide. You know, emotions are like water. Sometimes you feel happy, and sometimes you're so sad. Yeah, what do you call that? Crazy. I'm kidding. But people today, because of instability, they don't operate with what the Spirit tells them to do. They operate with their emotions. And the worst thing that can happen to a firstborn, a primary 12, even a pastor, come on, is when you operate, in your emotions because sometimes you're up there on the top of the wheel and sometimes you're down there sometimes it's high tide sometimes it's low tide sometimes you have money and sometimes you don't amen sometimes you're excited and sometimes everything is grayish you don't see what is ahead of you believe me my friends if you are not going to be stable you will lose the momentum that's why today, Bishop Oriel preached about momentum builder. Amen? God is about to build momentum in your life. And the way that you need to establish it, the way that you need to sustain it, is when you become stable. With or without COVID, I'm going to fulfill G12 vision. Everybody say amen to that. You cannot become like Reuben. Right? You know what Reuben is? Reuben is a pastor who is sometimes uh, a barbellista. You know barbellista? You know barbellista? What is barbellista in English? A muscle builder, right? And at night, is not a barbellista anymore. A Barbie, right? Unstable in all of his ways. Sino mo dito yung ganong klase ano? You know, sometimes you're so... Hot, sobrang in it. You're so hot in the vision. And sometimes you're so cold. Why? Instability. Come on. Amen. Why don't you look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, 
Are you stable? Come on. You know, uh, before I left for Philippines, uh, for the States, we had a problem with our electricity. Now, in the church, uh, there, there was the, the electricity from 220 volts, it became 180 or 150. And suddenly, all of our lights shut down, right? Our lead wall started to, you know, malfunction because the electricity was unstable. Stable. Do you know why many churches shut down during the pandemic? Come on. Do, do you know why many cell leaders, their, their, their cell groups closed? It's because of instability. That's why I ask God, God, if I'm going to continue the momentum and if you're going to do something, Lord, in our church, Lord, I want a stable 220 volts in our electricity that will run to every equipment in our church. Come on. And that is my prayer for every pastor and every leader in this church. The power of God will continue to saturate you. 220 to 240 volts power from on high upon your life. Why? Because I know that when you are stable in all of your ways, you are not a double-minded person. Then God will entrust many things in your life. Everybody say amen to that. Now, to be unstable is like this, all right? Sometimes you're so kind, but sometimes you're so rude. Sometimes you're so excited, you would, you would uh, message Bishop, uh, Johnson, and, and you will tell everything, you know what, Bishop, Bishop, and then suddenly you deactivate. Have you ever, have you ever had a, a disciple like that? You know, they're so hot. And then suddenly you would find them on Facebook, you don't find them. Why? Unstable in all of their ways. Come on. You know what is the enemy of the vision? The enemy of the vision is consistently inconsistent yes come on why am i preaching this because if god will entrust momentum in your church if god will entrust momentum in your in your in your family if god will entrust momentum in your business you need to be stable in all of your ways amen i don't want to be a verse 4 christian I want to become a verse 3, the firstborn, the excellency of my power. That is what Jacob said. Amen? I want to become, you know, the verse 3 Christian that, you know, did you know why I am working hard in our province? I live in the province of Pampanga, in the city of San Fernando. And right there in that city, I make sure that the vision is alive. Are you there? I make sure that our church, even in this time of pandemic, I did not allow discouragements to consume us. You want to you wanna know why? Because I don't want to become a Reuben. Bishop Morel trained me since the beginning. You saw me everywhere Bishop Morel goes, I would, I would always carry his bag, and he would train me. I am, a, I, am a, I am one of the 12 tribes of Israel. But I don't want to be a Reuben. I want to become a Joseph. Come on. I don't want my Jacob, because Bishop Aurel is my Jacob. I don't want him to, be, to, to write something. You know what? Junelle is my verse 3, my firstborn. My la la la. And then suddenly, verse 4, unstable as water. No, 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 no. Come on. Because the Bible says, number one, okay, if you are unstable, you will not excel. The reason why I, I was trying to excel in all of we do, you know, in Start Up Your New Life, Suinil, we're doing life class. We excel in our, we progress in every part of our church. The reason why I am doing that is because 
I don't want to disappoint my leaders. I don't want to disappoint my Jacob. Come on. And God sent you here today so that you will rise up. Amen. For United States of America, for Virginia, for Atlanta. Amen. You're going to rise up for New York, New Jersey. And you're not going to dis- you are not going to disappoint your Jacob. Come on. Everybody say amen to that. Now, what is the call of God to each and every one of us? I am believing that if you will become a 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 disciple, you know, you will be able to sustain the momentum that God will start in your life. What is the 58th verse of 1 Corinthians 15. It says here, everybody read it with me. One, two, and three. So now, beloved ones, stand firm, stable, and enduring. Live your lives with an unshakable confidence. We know that we prosper and excel in every season by serving the Lord because we are assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with fruit that that is the call of God for us. To stand firm, to be stable, and enduring. Amen. That's kabampangan. Enduring. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, endure. Because without endurance, without standing firm, without being stable, believe me, anything that God will start in your life, nothing will succeed. You would always fail your Jacob. There there will always be a verse 4 in your life. But I pray that we will remain the verse 3 of Genesis 49 in this generation. Amen? Now, what's the outcome of stable disciples? I want to encourage you first this afternoon, okay? I don't, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to put mo- uh, some training things first. I want to concentrate first on inspiring you that when you decide to become stable today, you may, you may be unstable for the past few months because of covid you may have had a, a time that you were shaken because of the pandemic of what has happened, but you need to decide today to be stable. You know why? Because the number one outcome of a stable disciple is that stable disciples excel. Come on. In contrary with Reuben, remember Reuben? Because he was unstable as water. He did not excel. You shall not excel. You know, that's the number one thing that I told my, my people in the church. It's COVID time. There, is, there are lockdowns that will happen. You know, we had a foresight already last year that, the, that this pandemic will not last three months, four months. Because that's, that is what most of the pastors were thinking. This is just three months. Come on, let's wait until it, everything will open. But we had a foresight that this, this will happen, this will remain about three years to five years. So I told my, I, 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 I conditioned, everybody say conditioning. It's so important that you condition the minds of your people. Your disciples, your 12, your one for four, the whole church must be conditioned. Okay? And you need to tell them that we need to become stable. We need to become rooted. We need to be established. You know, we, we need to stand like palm trees, like cedars of Lebanon. We need to rise up and be stable in this time of pandemic because God is about to do a momentum in your church. So when I told them that, that to stand firm is to become stable, I challenged them to excel. Now, why don't we go back in Genesis 49, verse 4. It says here, Unstable as water, you shall not excel. So in other words, no stability, no advancement. Everybody say those words. 
no stability, no advancement. In other words, no stability, no fruitfulness. So, I overemphasize this to our people. Never ever lose your wonders. You need to be excited whether we are in the digital platform, come on, or we are meeting physically, or our primary 12 or G12 meeting is via Zoom, via Google Meet, or maybe Messenger, whatever platform it is, never ever lose your wonder. Be stable in all of your ways. So we did not stop. March 18, okay? I remember those times. March 18, I was with Bishop. We, we came from an island in, from uh, Mindanao. We went back to Manila. We almost missed our flight. And we might be locked down at that island, but it's a very, very good island. It's White Beach. But we were able to go home. And we started our live streaming. Live streaming. Because the, the Philippines was shut down already. There was lockdown. But I started telling my people, we're not going to stop. We are still going to evangelize. We are not going to be moved and be unstable just because of this pandemic. Come on. So we were the first who did the evangelism via FB. How did we do it? Can I give you a little... Uh, uh, you know, little illustrations. So what we did, what we've done is we just posted in Facebook because the cell groups cannot meet anymore. No more church service. No more face-to-face. -face. Everybody cannot go out. Only one person from each family can go out to get groceries. That's how it looks like. Can you imagine that? So we started to make towers so that we can uh, send signals to every home. We help them to have internet. When everybody's telling we don't have internet here, we don't have internet, we are repeating our signal to them and giving them internet connections. Come on. Even in rural areas. And then we started, you know, we started telling them, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a cell blast or we call it onyok in the Philippines, Okay. We're going to evangelize. All you need is to post here and post there. Like one of the posts we did is as simple as this. We posted, um, uh, for example, how is my love life? There is social distancing. And then on the bottom, your true love life is Jesus. Meet me on Friday, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Come on. And you know what? Everybody, they're all locked down in houses. And they would see that in Facebook. Everybody wa wa wanted to join. That's how we develop our evangelism through, through digital. Because we don't want to lose stability. Come on. We started to do Google Meet, Google Meetings in campuses. Until one day, after all these digital platforms were established, now we can meet face to face through through um, you know through small groups. Until now, we are doing face to face in our cell groups, and then one day we were able to open the church fifty percent. Come on, you know whether we like it or not, there will be transitions, there will be changes that will happen, but when the pastor is stable in all of his ways. When the 12 are stable in all of their ways, when they are not Reuben, they will excel and the church will grow. Amen. 2020, until December of 2020, I give God all the glory. We were able to evangelize 907 new believers, VIPs, for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of lockdowns, lockdowns, many lockdowns, ECQ and GCQ, you know, uh, GCQ, whatever they are, barbecue, people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Stable in all of their ways. Because no stability, no advancement. Everybody say amen to that. 
you know, even in work, even in business, even in, you know, cell groups, any area of your life, stability is a requirement. You know, one day, I, um, I was praying to God to open a new business because our business shut down also. Our business was lights and sounds. We provide lead walls to our city. But, you know, March 18, everything shut down. After three months, they have to cancel all the events. And then I prayed to God, Lord, why don't you give me a stable business? I was thinking of my family. I was thinking of my children. I was thinking of the church. The church doesn't have an income that time. Come on. I don't know if you experienced that, but we experience it. So I told God, God, give me a stable business. And you know what? God gave me an idea. Everybody say idea. He gave me an idea. And uh, we were able to make, to brand a new liquid petroleum gas. They call it an LPG. In the Philippines, that is what we use for cooking. Because I asked God, God, would you give me a business that is pandemic-proof, COVID-proof? Even when the storm comes, even when there is COVID, people will still cook. So we started the company. They call it iFuel LPG. I'm not plugging it, okay? But I'm just saying it's a stable business. Are you there? When the people started to understand and we were able to educate them with the product that we have, you know what? They kept on buying. Now it's a repeat business. Okay? From, uh, from we started with at least 500,000 pesos. That's more likely uh, 100, I don't know how much is that in dollars. 500,000 pesos. $10,000. Today is about 8 million pesos in just one year. How did that happen? I'm showing you the picture of stability. It's not like, it, it is not, it's non-perishable. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a product that, that we have. We only need the cylinder. We only need what is inside, that pure propane. And then when we sell it, it's sold. How did that happen? Stability. And I cried out to God, Lord, I want that in our church. Come on. The truth is we lost many people also. And I lost nine leaders. But because whoever was left became stable in all of their ways. When the momentum came, come on, everybody say momentum. When the momentum came, we were able to hold on to that momentum. And today, our church, praise God, in 2020, we were able to evangelize 907 people. And in 2021 of January until last month, we were able to evangelize about 870 plus new believers. We had our encounter before we, before we came here. We have about 220 life class encounter students. Come on. Now, I'm not giving you these numbers because we are better than you. No. It's just because I understood the power of momentum and the momentum sustainer is stability. Come on. Because no stability, no advancement. If you want to advance, if you want to be promoted, okay, we need to be stable. How can I entrust a, a five-carat diamond ring to my, my son? He's just two years old. He's not stable. What he's going to do with the diamond? He will eat it. <laughs> right? He will swallow it. <laughs> How would God entrust the multitudes to your church, to my church, if we are unstable in all of our ways? Sometimes you like 12, but not anymore. I'm just three now, right? Sometimes you like training, not anymore. I don't like life class now. I stop with my life class. I stop with my destiny training. I stop with mentoring because it's COVID. Unstable in all of your ways. Come on. I love you. That's why I'm preaching this to you. 
because God gave this revelation to me. I call it the greatest message of all times, stability. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Now, the Bible says in verse 58, okay, of 1 Corinthians 15, we know that we prosper. Everybody say the word prosper. Verse 58. We know that we prosper and excel in every season by serving the Lord. Everybody say every season. You know what every season means? Whether it's fall, okay, when you're falling. <laughs> Whether it's spring, when everybody's cold. Tell you, come on. Whether it's summer, whether whatever season, you will prosper. Come on. And the way that you prosper and excel is when you are stable. Hallelujah. So, I asked the Lord, Lord, prosper me. Because our church income, we, you know, the first three months or four months of, our, of the lockdown, uh, this is one thing I've learned. There, are, there, 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 is no, uh, there are no income for our church. Because we are not used that time to digital giving. Well, America, you know already that. We are used to the traditional you know, uh, gi uh, giving through the boxes. But suddenly we have to pivot. We have to, uh, you know, we have to give through online. And it takes a while. So it took us about three months to four months to establish that. So I told the Lord, Lord, I want to be stable. And I told my people, never, ever stop giving. And because of that, because of stability, the Lord prospered not only the church, but the business too. This is practical, okay? But the business too. When God entrusted, when, when God saw the stability in my heart and in the heart of my wife and our church and our family, then God prospered everything in us. Because the Bible says that when you are stable, when you stand firm, then you will prosper in every season by serving God. Amen. A stable disciple will become a blessed disciple. Come on. You know, I, I want to thank God for Pastor Elmer, you know, and, and his wife. Because what I saw in their lives is that you know, they are in, in adversities. They, are, they have problems that they're facing. But they never gave up on this vision. Are you there? They did not give up. Now, I, I saw a lot of pastors who gave up on the vision. They just stopped. They, 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 you don't see them anymore. When you ask them, come to the conference, come to, you know, to the mentorings, they would just ignore but I saw this couple, how they fought for the vision. We all know that Pastor Elmer was diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's. And that is something that, you know, that is a great reason for him to stop. He, he will just mind him, his, his uh, own problem, his family. But you know what? I love it. I love it when I saw him that he's fighting. He said, Bishop, Pastor Janelle, come to New York. Come here. We want to do the mentorings. And when, when, when I went to their house, you know, I, I saw how God prospered the stable. Come on. We drove here with his Durango, with Captain Sit, <laughs> and we were so happy. And I said, prosperity belongs to those who are stable. Everybody say amen to that. Why don't you face your neighbor? And ask your neighbor, are you stable? One more time, ask your neighbor, are you stable? <laughs> now the third outcome of a stable disciple is in Jeremiah 17 verse 8. They are like trees planted. Can, we, can you show that? Jeremiah 17 verse 8. I'll, just, I'll read it for you. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep in the water, into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat 
or worried by long months of drought. Their, their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. In the G12 vision today, our theme is fruitfulness. Be fruitful. And it was never an accident that God placed it in the heart of Pastor Cesar that 2021 is a year of fruitfulness. And suddenly, when that word came, boom, pandemic came. But believe me, only the stable will bear fruit. Amen. So, number three, stable disciples are fruitful. Are you there? Stable disciples are fruitful. Fruitfulness comes from stability. What do I mean with stability? When you are rooted in Christ, when you are grounded in the Word of God, and when your life is established in the vision and in your faith, that is what we call stability. Are you following? Remember, there is no fruitfulness without spiritual stability. And I was writing this message. You know, this, is one, this, this word stability or spiritual stability is one of the most neglected and underappreciated word in the Christian community. Because, you know, people like strategies. You know, when, when, when we will come and Bishop would come, they would always ask Bishop, what are you doing now? What, what, can you give us a new plot? Can you give us something, you know, to do and this and that, you know? Can you give us, uh, you know, uh, your timeline on what is happening in your church? But you know what? Without stability, the strategy, the structure, and the system is nothing. Spiritual stability is the common denominator of the, of the system, of the structure of G12, and the, and the strategy. When somebody is spiritually stable in all of his ways, believe me, when somebody is committed, committed to what he, he committed to do. For example, okay, I'm not bragging about this, but it's a testimony. When I came home from the States, from here, because I'm from Texas, when I came home and Bishop told me, Janelle, Malu, me and my wife, when, they, when he told us, go back to the Philippines. I know you've been there. I know you're working there. You have your house and lot. You have your cars there. But go home to the Philippines. We are going to transform our nation. When I heard that, from Bishop, I, I know it was the Lord who, who spoke through him. We went home to the Philippines in 2013. We gave up the medical field. My wife is a nurse. She's an ICU nurse. And as soon as we step into our nation, Philippines, they call it lupang hinirang. Right? Nag-alabang aking puso sa dibdib ko'y buhay. I'm sorry. I'm speaking in tongues. Okay? Um, you know, when we, when we stepped to our nation, it was not always happy times. There were times that we, they had to correct us. There were times that we didn't have money. There were times, you know, if, if we are just going to become a Reuben, come on, and we were just operate with our emotions, because ministry is like, Water. Sometimes it's up and down, up and down. And if we will just operate with the emotions and not with the word of the Lord that God gave Bishop Oriel, that we are going to go home to the Philippines, we might have as well went back here to the land flowing with milk and honey, United States of America. <laughs> but you know what? I'm here today. I just go shopping here. <laughs> And I go back to the Philippines. <laughs> you know, I go here for vacation. We go in different nations. You know why? Because I did not operate with my emotions. 
when we had problems in the Philippines, when we went home that we don't have a car yet. We went home because when we went home, by the way, we sold our house, we sold everything, and the economy here was so down that time. So we didn't get equity. And whatever we had, we paid our credit cards because we wanted to go home debt-free. So when we got home to the Philippines, we had nothing. We only have a few dollars. You know, still about $10,000. That's, that's not so bad, but that's nothing to start off. But we became stable in all of our ways. We held on to the word of the Lord to us, that as we step into our nation, the Lord will make us fruitful. And today we are pastoring, even in this time of pandemic, we are pastoring one church with three locations. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we have about uh, uh, 2,500 people, online and physical. We lost nine leaders, but we were able to replenish and God gave us more VIPs and more people now who are loving Jesus Christ and who are conquering our nation, Philippines. Why? Stability. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor, be stable? You know, this is something I've learned from Bishop, how to be stable. Can I just share this to you real quick? How to be stable. Number one, be consistent in your daily devotion. You know, for the past, for the past one, 19 months, I would always sit at Bishop's feet, okay? Because we have a, he has a farm, and we go there at least twice or thrice a week. And he would teach every, every week, three times. And these are the things that I need as a pastor to develop and be stable with. Number one, my consistent daily devotion. Never, ever let your devotion, your Bible reading, you know, go away from your life. In order for you to become stable in all of your ways, the word, it is written. Everybody see the word, it is written. That is the weapon of Jesus in the wilderness. The way that he conquered the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? It's because of the word, it is written. Your daily devotion must be consistent. And then secondly, what we were able to develop for the past, six, uh, past 19 months of this pandemic is our daily prayer life. Everybody say prayer life. I'm not talking about your prayer during your uh, lunch. Thank you, Lord, for this put in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not talking about that, okay? I am talking about your prayer life, your daily prayer life. You know, the way our church in the Philippines in 2013, when I came home to the Philippines, we did not start our church with worship service. We started it with prayer, everyday prayer. We call it prayer connection. Since 2013 until this morning in the Philippines, we never stopped praying corporately. Amen? Amen. At least 150 people to 200 people pray every single day because that will make you and the church stable. Prayer life. Everybody say prayer life. I know you know this, but I think this is a good reminder for us. And then our fellowship with our gospel community, okay? We need to go to our gospel community. This is our community, the G12 vision is your family. Everybody say amen. So if there is a conference like this, there is a fellowship like this, you should go. When I started to uh, cast this vision about fellowship, because, because of the lockdowns, people, they don't want to go to church anymore, right? And believe me, those who doesn't want to go to church are the ones who are unstable. Yeah. I have a, I have a secret to tell you. Those who don't want to go to the conference, somehow there is instability. Come on. Amen. When I started to tell, my, to tell the people in the church, okay, now you start, the, the way that we did it is like this. We started our fellowship by cells first, okay? 
because the heart of the digital vision is sales. So th when the lockdown hit, no sales, only digital, then suddenly we transition the fellowship to face-to-face -face cell group. So now all of our cell groups are now operating face-to-face -face because that is their fellowship. Come on. And then eventually, we started our worship services. Are you there? So now we have services on Sundays. We have two service, two to three services on Sundays. And then we have our Wednesday and our Friday. People go to that fellowship. Because people, they need, we were born to fellowship. Later on, we're going to eat together. That is what we call fellowship. Everybody say amen to that. It's so sad. If you're a pastor and you're not, you don't belong to a community, that is so sad. That's why when Bishop Ariel opened his farm in Tarlac, that's what he was telling a while ago, we were so happy. We, you know, pastors who doesn't have hope anymore because of the pandemic, their churches are almost closing. When they came to that place of fellowship, it's a farm, but we call it the place of fellowship. Then they began to have hope. We eat together. Of course, with protocols, we have masks. We're eating with masks. I'm kidding. <laughs> so we're enjoying. And for the last 19 months, since June of last year, okay, June of last, about maybe 15 months, we enjoyed every moment there. Actually, in that, in that place, COVID doesn't survive because of the presence of God. When there is the fellowship of the brothers, COVID cannot defeat us. Everybody say amen to that. And then fourthly, how to be stable? Simple. Obedience to God's standard. Bishop Oriel, had been, he, has, he taught us that we need to abide to the standards. Amen? If life class is a standard, then do not take out life class from your church. If destiny training is a standard, then do not take it out. Winning souls, making disciples, win, consolidate, disciples send is a standard. Don't take it out. Because the moment that you do not train or disciples your people anymore, then instability will happen. God will send momentum, but you can never handle it. Because you don't embrace and obey the standards. Everybody say amen to that. I believe Bishop will t talk about more about these standards. And then number five, lastly, how to be stable, fulfillment of God's God-given assignment, I may say. If I want to be stable, I need to continue evangelizing. In this time of pandemic, Nine or about ten, yeah, about ten of my friends from our fraternity, from our, uh, you know, from our neighborhood, they all got born again. So because I was embracing my God-given assignment as a pastor, you know, our, my primary twelve, they never stopped evangelizing too. And because the 12 are evangelizing, the one for four evangelize. So in a matter of one year, two years now, 907 and 870 people came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, those numbers are not just numbers. They have bodies and names. And I am testifying to you that it is not impossible for the church to grow in this time of pandemic, when we have stable pastors, when we have stable disciple makers, amen, when we have stable workers and even stable disciples in the church. That's why for me, my friends, it's so important that we need to become stable. Everybody say amen to that. Do I still have time or it's time already? It's time. Okay. You know what? I, I'm going to pray for you, okay, that somehow you got this revelation that one of the greatest messages of all times is stability. No condemnation. But we really need to bring our people to a place where they will be stable. Everybody say amen. 
this is what we're going to do today. We're going to stand on our feet. Amen. And if you are husband and wife here, or maybe you're a church, and you know that there is instability in your church, in your leadership, we are going to pray. Amen. Why don't we stand on our feet right now? Husband and wife, hold each other's hand. Anyway, this, uh, this, I, I believe that this place is where the Holy Spirit lives. He is here right now. And I want you to begin to open your mouth. Hold each other's hands for husband and wife and maybe for leaders after leaders. I want you to begin to declare stability with your 12 right now, with your disciples. Amen? Come on, let's do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth. If there are Rubens, if there are people who are not excelling and not advancing in the church, they were stagnant. As the power of the Holy Spirit right now to come upon them. Mention their names. Mention your 12 to the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit right now to touch their hearts. If they are double-minded people, unstable in all of their ways, allow the Holy Spirit, God, wherever they are right now, we apply the very blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of the Lamb upon our 12. Come on, declare it right now. The blood of Jesus to the 12. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now I want you to declare the power of the Holy Spirit upon your 144. Maybe they are leaders or disciples in your church who are frozen in apathy. They are not moving anymore. I want you to begin to pray for them. Because momentum is coming. You need a sustainer and that is a stability. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I declare that every disciple that you have entrusted to us, they will become rooted, O oh God. Rooted in the Word of God. They will be established, O oh Lord. They will be established in the vision. If any of them, O oh Lord, is so weak right now, if any among them, O oh Lord, is unstable in all of their ways, Lord, we pray for them. We ask you, Lord, to Touch their hearts. Come on, ask the Lord to touch their hearts. Mention their names. You don't want to lose one leader. You don't want to lose one disciple. You don't want to lose them. You love them. That's why pray for them right now. Because something is happening when we pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we put our trust upon you, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Acts 4, verse 11 to 12, it says here, For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures, where it says, The stones that you builders rejected has now become the corner stone. There is no salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. Father, we put our trust upon you, the cornerstone, the way, God, that we will become stable, the way, Lord, that we will endure this race is when we put our trust in you. So, Jesus, be the Lord of our church. Jesus, be the Lord of our cell groups. Lord, Jesus, be the Lord of our family, of our business. You are our sure foundation today. And, Father, we thank you we thank you. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord right now and begin to thank Him. Lord, we thank you that beginning today, we will be able to handle momentum in our lives because God, we are not Rubens. We are the Josephs in this generation. We will produce an Ephraim. We will produce a Manasseh. Lord, we will become the solution and we are going to solve problems because God, stability 
is upon each and everyone. Come on, receive it right now. You are stable. You are stable. You are stable in all of your ways. Thank you, Father. We honor you for the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you.